Let us assemble the council and let's talk about a specific moment, perhaps one of the greatest moments in geekdom. In film history, in fact, I would go so far. I am the father. Holy crap! You don't have to be a Star Wars fan, you don't even have to have seen the movie. Everybody knows that. And it's iconic, and it's amazing. But it shouldn't work. Why shouldn't it work? What the heck is he talking about? Well, first let's accept the fact that George Lucas did not invent that twist. It was a very old, very cheesy twist, in fact. The idea that the villain is in some way related to the hero, usually in the form of father or brother. Here's the thing, though. Traditionally, when that sort of relationship is revealed, it can't be revealed by the villain, because the villain has no credibility. We have absolutely no reason to believe him. In fact, we have every reason to doubt him. He's the bad guy. Why are we going to take his word? Normally, that sort of information would be sparsed out by the Obi-Wan Kenobi character, the character with knowledge, the character with integrity, the mentor type character. Those are the ones who traditionally would reveal to the hero, the person who you are fighting is your brother, is your father, is your cousin twice removed, whatever the heck it happens to be. It has to be them. We, have, we need to believe them. Because if you question the reveal, then the reveal has no power. So that's why those sorts of characters need to be the ones to say it. But he wasn't the one who said it. Darth Vader said it, so why do we believe it? James Earl Jones, he's gone on record as saying that the first time he read that in the script, his immediate reaction was, that's not true, he's not really his father, he's telling a lie. That was what he thought, so why don't we think it? I think it comes down to one key aspect, and it's not the words, it's not the voice, it's not Luke's reaction. I think what ultimately that moment hinges on and what makes us believe it is the thing that happens between when the words, I am your father, are spoken and just before Luke has his meltdown, we get this. Those notes, that music. John Williams managed to take the Imperial March theme that had already been established and give us that slight similarity to that classic dun dun dun, which is stupid and cheesy but always makes the point, oh, dun dun. It has that feel to it, but there's also a melancholy to it. There's a loss of innocence to it, because Luke just lost his innocence. The audience just lost their innocence. And that music is why we don't question it. That's what sells it. That is why we believe in that moment. If you take the music out, there would be, I would guess, about half the audience going, I don't know if I believe him. You put that music in there, everybody believes it. You got one of the most iconic moments in film history. And on that note, this council is adjourned.